Welcome to day 26 of Daily Wisdom, a 31-day journey through the biblical book of Proverbs. My name is Melissa Paperio, and I'm so excited to be your guide as we walk through another passage of Proverbs together. Did any of you grow up with a pet? I recently had a fish named Pudge the Fish. May he rest in peace. Now, Mr. the Fish was my buddy through my senior year of college, but unfortunately, shortly after arriving at Apopka, he passed. I also had a dog named Coco when I was growing up. Coco and I had a very interesting relationship. When she was a puppy, I was young, and I was so scared of her. Over time, I got over my fear, but I struggled to then build a relationship with her. To me, she was always more of an annoyance. I never understood the things that she did, and sometimes it felt like she was intentionally bullying me. There was this one time when we had family over, I was sitting at the table, and homegirl just strutted herself over and just peed on my feet. No warning, it was disgusting. Now, as I got older, I knew that I would never be able to understand why she did the things that she did, and so we kind of kept our distance. I enjoyed having her sit at my feet while I watched TV, but Besides that, I didn't really care for her too much. Dogs are just so strange sometimes. We love them because they're loyal, but then they also do some weird stuff. They tear things apart, they mark their territory, and they bark all day long. And sometimes they even eat their own vomit. And that is actually what we're going to focus on today. Why do dogs eat their own vomit? Just kidding, but that is the metaphor that Solomon uses in one of the verses of today's proverb. Proverbs 26, 11 says, as a dog returns to its vomit, so fools repeat their folly. Solomon writes this verse to illustrate a fool's relationship to their sin. And this proverb is even repeated again by Peter in 2 Peter 2, 22. Now to dogs, eating their own vomit is actually appealing. Because of their incredible sense of smell, dogs are able to smell their fresh vomit and they recognize it as a yummy meal. To us, that seems completely disgusting. But for dogs, this is normal. That is why this proverb is so revolting to us as we recognize the reality of what it's like to be a fool. As humans, we can't comprehend why anyone would return to or potentially eat anything so foul. Why would someone eat something that clearly made them sick? So then why is it tempting for us to return to sin that clearly hurt us and made us sick? Why is it so easy for us to become the fool in this passage? Scripture tells us to purge yourself from evil. And there are actually nine references to this in the book of Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy is a message from Moses to the Israelites right before his death. His goal is to remind them of all the times the Lord worked miracles in their lives by rescuing them from slavery, from parting the Red Sea, providing for them, and by bringing them to the promised land. However, the Israelites kept turning from God and pursuing sinful lifestyles. They were disobedient. They complained that the manna wasn't enough. They were fearful of entering the land that the Lord had promised. They worshiped idols and they lived selfishly. That is why Moses was so passionate on delivering this final message and reminding them of two things, the goodness of God and to respond to the goodness of God through obedience. One of the ways he instructed to do this was by purging themselves from evil. Dictionary.com defines purging by saying, to rid of whatever is impure or undesirable, cleanse, purify, to rid, clear, or free. Some people refer to vomiting as purging. So we can conclude that Proverbs 26 is referring to us throwing up unwanted sin, emotion, and darkness from our lives. So then why did the Israelites return to their vomit by continually forgetting about the immense power and miracles of God that brought them to him in the first place? Why did they desire to return to the comfort of slavery in Egypt? To answer this question, we have to look further in scripture. In this life, we have one purpose, and that is to know God and to make him known. 
And a passage that clearly tells us this is actually Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20, where Jesus says, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. As believers, we are called to go into the world and to make disciples of Christ. One practical tool and word of wisdom that the Lord provided us with is the stories of the miracles that He has done in each of our lives that reflect His goodness and power. Throughout scripture, we see stories of so many people who have been impacted by God, including the Israelites. In the Old Testament, we read stories about Adam and Eve, Joseph, Esther, David, Jonah, and in the New Testament, we read stories about Peter, Paul, John, Jesus, and so many others. Our testimonies serve as reminders of why we first fell in love with Jesus. In Journey Students, we teach our students, if the Lord has redeemed you, say so. So I would love to share a story about how God worked a miracle in my life. Now, just a disclaimer, this story may be hard to hear for some viewers. So please listen and watch with caution. In October, 2003, I was dropped off at my grandmother's house to be driven to school. My grandmother would drive my aunt and I to school and work every single day. And I was so excited because I just loved going to school. I just loved my preschool. And so I go to my car and I'm sitting in my seat and my aunt who has special needs was supposed to buckle me in. Now, she, for whatever reason, she was struggling that day. And my grandmother decided, you know what, it's okay. We're going just down the road. We'll be okay. We're running late anyway. So as we were driving, she drops my aunt off at work, but I noticed that something was wrong. I, I just knew. My grandmother had cut a curb and I was scared. I just remember the car rocking. And so I grabbed my seatbelt and I tried so hard to push it in, but it just wasn't, it wasn't going in. And the next thing I knew, I woke up on the side of the road, looking up at a police officer who was asking me for my phone number. I, I had no idea what was going on. And I found out that I was actually ejected from the backseat window of my grandmother's Volkswagen Beetle. And so I recited my phone number to this police officer and he asked if I then could stand up. And as a four-year-old, I was like, um, yeah, like of course I can stand up. I didn't know, I couldn't. And so I reached down to the ground and I went to go push myself up, but I, I didn't even make it an inch. And I just plopped back down. Another nice woman came over to me. She told me that she had a pretty necklace for me to put on, and which ended up to be a neck brace, and they carried me off in a stretcher. But before we got in the ambulance, I turned and I saw the car to my left completely, completely smashed. And after being rushed to the hospital, my parents meeting us there, only knowing that there's been an accident, you need to come. Uh, we found out that I'd only broken my arm and my leg, just my right arm and my left leg. There was no concussion, there were no scrapes, no bruises, and I was alive. Thankfully, we both survived. Now, just that story is a miracle, but what really continues to blow my mind is looking at the intricacies of it, being told by the cops that if I was buckled in, that I would have died. Looking at the car, looking at the window of the car, seeing how small it was, and seeing how I just so perfectly was ejected from it in a way that I would only break my arm and my leg. And now when I was a teenager, I would, I would doubt myself. And I would say, why, why am I still here? Like, wouldn't it have just been so much easier for me to just be taken out then? Like, wh why, why am I still alive? What is my purpose here on this earth? And I'm so blessed and thankful to say that I am confidently here today to live my life for Jesus and to give everything I have for Him and that He has a clear purpose for my life. I could have been paralyzed, yet now I love to dance. I could have been silenced, yet now I sing praises to our great God. And it's crazy how over time, God just continued to work 
that through that accident, my parents got more connected into the local church, which is where I first accepted Jesus, which then led me to apply to a Christian college where I discovered my call to full-time ministry, which is then where I met Pastor Dustin Agard, who led me to Journey Christian Church to be a resident. And just blows my mind that not only would I not be here today at Journey, but I might not be a believer and I might not be here on this earth. However, it's not about me. It's not about my story. My story is so much bigger than what my eyes can see. The impact has caused a train reaction that is beyond me. And it's selfish of me to keep it contained. The Lord has rescued me from physical and spiritual death so that I may bring glory to his name through the miracle he performed. It would have been easy for me to die, but Paul writes in Philippians, to live is Christ and to die is gain. We all have a purpose here on this earth and it is to share the love and light of Christ. We are called to make his name known. Each of us who believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior have a story about how we were once dead but now are alive in Christ so that when temptation comes and when challenges come and all hope seems lost, then instead of going back to the vomit and turning back to the darkness, that we would be reminded of the joy of our salvation and the joy of being rescued from the depths of sin. We have been set free. Our stories of how the Lord has faithfully shown up in our lives, along with the stories and truths of scripture, are what remind us to flee from the vomit and to run towards Christ. We are safe in his loving arms. Now, you've made it to day 26. That takes some diligence. That takes hunger. That takes intentionality. However, don't miss the reason why we are here and meet online each and every single day. Don't miss the true purpose of this study. The purpose to pursue and grow in an intentional and personal relationship with Jesus. We're the dogs that continually return to their vomit, but by the grace and mercy of Christ, we are continually sought after by the God, despite our continued disobedience to him. He is the good shepherd that leaves the 99 for the one. He is chasing after you. He knows you by name. He knows your story. He sees you right now and he wants you to come home. He wants you to leave the vomit behind. You throw it up, it's gone. We discussed today in, in scripture, how scripture tells us to purge the evil from our lives. What boundaries do you need to put in place to cut off the temptation? God isn't taunting you. He isn't dangling a carrot in front of your face. Sin is not from him. Jesus defeated sin. And we now have the ability to live lives of freedom in his glorious name. You are not chained to sin anymore. You've been set free. You are not a slave to the vomit you feel guilted and shame to return to. Because guilt and shame are not from God. You are not stuck. God is asking you to surrender to him, to give your life to him, to give all of your life to him. Jesus's miracle on the cross is the biggest miracle that could ever be offered to us. If you've never believed in it before, or if you have any questions about what it looks like to love and live for Jesus, please comment below. We would love to help guide you as you start your journey with Jesus. It is not fate, chance, luck, or coincidence that you are breathing at this very moment or that you're watching this video right now. Don't waste your life. I wanna challenge you to be bold and to share the story of the miracle that God has done in your life by rescuing you from spiritual death. Your testimony has the ability to impact the lives of the lost, the broken, and the hopeless. Allow the light of the gospel in your life to shine into the lives around you. You have the opportunity to share God's greatest gift with the world. Simply start by sharing your story about how he has rescued you with a close friend or family member. As you continue to grow in your confidence, continue to share with others. It's amazing to see what God can do when we are faithful to the calling he has given us. How God works in our lives is meant to be shared and more importantly, remembered. Your story 
isn't just a story to be told, but a story to be remembered. I wanna encourage you to keep on continuing this Proverbs challenge. We're almost there, we're almost at the end. Keep reading a passage daily. Keep watching the videos daily. Keep meditating on a verse of scripture daily. Set the rhythms right as we start off our year together so that when this challenge ends in just a few days, you continue reading in scripture. The Bible is God's way of speaking to us. And don't forget to share that with others. Let's pray together. God, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful to be here. God, I'm so thankful for the opportunity to live a life for you, for not for my glory, but for yours alone, God. That you didn't just rescue me spiritually so that I could be in heaven with you, God, but you rescued me physically here on earth to share the story about how you work miracles in each and every single one of our lives, God. God, I pray that the people watching this video be reminded that they each have a story, that their testimony is a testimony that is meant to be shared because it's the story about how you, God, have shown your light, God. It is all about you. We are just a speck in the grand narrative that you have for us here on earth. And God, I'm just so thankful and blessed to serve at a church that just loves you so deeply, God. I pray as we go throughout the rest of our days that we would just continue to glorify you in all that we do, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for joining us for Daily Wisdom. Don't forget to subscribe to Journey's YouTube channel and sign up for notifications for future messages. If what you heard today was helpful or encouraging, please share it with others. Join us again tomorrow for more Daily Wisdom.